Welcome into episode 24 of season 20 of Sports Den. I'm Matt Dean alongside Mary Rominger. Happy state hockey tournament week on the boys' side. We've got the girls' basketball state tournament right around the corner and a plenty of our North Metro TV school still very much in the mix, Mary. Uh, aside too, I mean, we have state championships being decided in all sports. I know you were covering some wrestling and swimming over the weekend, so mm -hmm. it's that time of year what the student athletes in these communities around us here in Blaine and elsewhere are all competing for state tournament time in Minnesota. And I'll say this past weekend there was plenty of representation by this area's teams at those state tournaments. So a great job and we've been waiting a long time for this month. Everybody hyping up the tournament going down at the X Centennial in the running in a very, very competitive boys section seven in double A. They were taking on the top seed Rogers last Tuesday, a rematch of a nine five win by the Royals back on January 21st at Centennial. It will be the Cougars really with some aggressive forecheck, a lot of energy striking first as Brock Carls fell to his side to slam it home just over a minute into the game. Cougars would go up 2-0 before Rodgers would answer. Easton Cody, the sophomore, stood tall in net for Centennial to keep this game tight. Into the second now, Rodgers tied it up 3-0-2 into the period, but the Cougars with an immediate answer. Casey Conan, the big man, the senior with his sixth of the season, put Centennial back up 3-2 just 57 seconds later. Still in the second, and then there's Harper Searles with his 20th of the season. Cougars led 4-2 going into the third period. Period. Rogers would get one back 60 seconds of the period on the power play. They would score to tie it. Sophomore Parker Desheen on the power play to pull this one back level at four. 20 seconds left to go in the game. Sam Ranallo with a pass weak side finds Desheen again. Rogers did not lead the entire night until the final 20 seconds of regulation. An absolute heartbreaker for the Cougars who turn in a terrific season. Five to four, your final in this one. Conan, one of the third liners for the Cougars, comes through big. The senior with two goals on the night finishes with seven just on the season. Uh, Harper Searles, who we mentioned, scored his 20th goal of the season. He will return for Centennial next year, a team high 47 assists. Their leading point score with 67 on the year. Uh, great careers for Peyton Blair and Drake Ramirez uh, as they will go on to junior hockey. The seniors graduating this year. Uh, this is how the rest of the Section 7 AA tournament shook out. Uh, it was a heck of a final as Andover are going to repeat and uh, go back as champions. Uh, this is in the Section uh, 7 bracket as, uh, as the Huskies moving on back to the X in uh, the group out of this one. So boys hockey, we got the state tournament coming up this week at the X, believe it or not. Uh, and our next tournament that we'll have coming up, girls basketball, right around the corner as we're going to be talking about some big games happening at Williams Arena and at the Target Center just around the corner. The madness of March is here, and we started off with a five-seed Spring Lake Park who opened up the Section 5-4A girls basketball tournament with five-seed Moundsview. Excuse me, Moundsview, the four-seed. And the winner of this matchup will be met by top seed Maple Grove in the semifinals. First bucket of the game, SLP's Cameron Smith drains the step back jumper. Both teams going back and forth early off the inbounds. Bella Such stands tall in the paint. 4-2. Moundsview to tie it. Haley Nelson's shot is off the mark, but she'll be there right for the putback. Such playing. Tough for the Panthers, another bucket off the inbounds pass. And SLP pulling away up seven with two minutes left in the first half until the Mustangs get the quick transition bucket to fall. Second half now, Panthers still leading, but Moundsview begins hooking. Yazzie Abed knocks down the triple to cut the deficit in half later. It's Abed again with the steal, and she takes it coast to coast for the bucket and one to tie it at 40. But in the end, Moundview keeps it up, able to pull off the 74 to 70 victory and SLP ends the season with an 11 and 16 overall record. On to section 7-4A, where two of our North Metro TV schools are the favorites in this group. Blaine, the two seed hosting seventh seed Forest Lake, although the Rangers won the previous matchup, a one possession game 
47-49 just 18 days prior. Liz Fearing putting the fear in the Bengals early, a 5-2 Forest Lake lead, and a bomb from Dom. That's Sadie Dominic, the junior for three, her second of the game to cap a 12-0 Bengal run at that point in the game. Still first half, good inside-out ball, finds Maddie Jurdy, who finishes with eight points as one of the leaders for the Rangers in this one. Still first half, Ramacher from straight on hits the trifecta for Blaine to put the Bengals back up seven. Into the second half now, Dominic dominating. Another tray. The Bengals' first bucket out of the locker room. They're back up seven. 9.30 to play now. Molly Garber, a three-level score, showing off her range in the mid-range. She had a quiet first half. The Bengals' leading score heating up, and then the Bengals start to open up an 18-point lead. They break the press and find Danielle Davis. Blaine with some stifling defense, their trademark in this game. Ramacher with a steal finds Wozniak as the Bengals hold Forest Lake to 11 points in the second half, and they roll on their way to the section semifinals. It's a six game winning streak for Blaine to advance them through onto the section final. They have held eight straight opponents to less than 50 points in that run and four to 40 or less. Dominic hitting a few big triples in the game leads all bangers of Bengal scorers with 18 points in this one. So good sign for Blaine. They don't get a huge game out of their leading score Garber with eight but the supporting cast able to pick up the slack and Blaine with that great defense holding Forest Lake to 30 moved on here to the section semifinals. Well, on the other side of the bracket, top seeded Centennial faces eight seed Coon Rapids and Coon Rapids did not earn a Northwest Suburban Conference win in the regular season. To the first half, the Cougars get the offensive board and it's Macy Littlefield cashing in the J. Centennial up 15-2 now. Nice pass from Jordan Metz to Autumn McCall. McCall battles in the lane for the basket. Big lead for the Cougars. Metz is wide open at the wing. And Metz sinks it. She finished with eight points. The first half clock winding down. Marissa Frost quick off the transition for a pass down low to KJ Tharp. And she gets that one to go. Second half now, McCall settles in for the long jumper, and it's good. 11 minutes to go, 53-22. Centennial in front, Littlefield pushing the pace. Quick dish to Frost, and Frost all net from three-point land. Run it again, this time to Maddie Sklicki from long range, and she knocks it down. A big time win for Centennial, 59 to 27 to advance in the tournament. The scoring was spread out, but McCall and Frost, the two who finished with double digits in points. And on the other side, Coon Rapids, no scores uh, reached that double digit uh, threshold. So Matt, uh, how did they do in the semifinals? Now let's find out. Centennial on, taking on the uh, Andover Huskies in round number two in the semifinals of girls section 7-4A. This one being played at North Branch High School up north. The Cougars having already beaten Andover twice previously this year, including a 59-34 win eight days prior. Andover's Morgan Miller lines one up from three to give the Huskies an early one-point lead. Hey, why do they call her Little if all she does is make the big plays? Macy Littlefield with her second of Back-to-back -back threes, capped an 8-3 Cougar run. Seven to play, still in the first half. Frost with a nice kick out to Jordan Metz, who cans it from three. That's the soccer goalie for the Cougars. Pretty good stroke on the basketball court as well. Frost warning in this game. That's Emma Frost. Don't get confused for Andover, who led the Huskies with 14 in this game. Marissa led the Cougars with 21. Second half now, an act of valor by Anna Valor. Brought the Huskies back within four. Autumn McCall gets it in the high post and a couple of shifty moves, lays it in for two to cap a 12-0 Centennial run. Big lead for the Cougars. They would get the full court pressure coming and break it beautifully, finding Katie Anderson under the basket. McCall, who we saw score that nifty bucket earlier, ends up with uh, the rock at the end of this play in transition and the top seed in the Section 7 tournament take care of business and move on to the final. What was, the, was the key good shooting? What was the key to the victory tonight? Um, I think we worked really well as a team. We knew that we needed to be better at zone looks and all light ones. And I think we did really good executing our plays. It helps when you shoot like that, certainly. 
Um, you, you must have been feeling it. Do you? How do you decide whether to shoot a three or to drive? Um, it's kind of like when I'm feeling it, I can kind of like get into my momentum when I shoot it. And if I bobble it or if the defender's close, I drive. In terms of the team defense, though, you knew they were going to make some runs, but you guys never let them back in the game. They tied it. They got within two. But every time they had a run, you responded with a run of your own. What does that say about the character of this team? Um, I think it just shows, like, we have fight in us, and we're not going to get down. And when things aren't going our way, we're just going to turn around and get them better and encourage ourselves and just be good teammates. What we noticed when you came into the game in the first half, you came out shooting right away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just the energy you bring off the bench and the confidence that I have that the teammates give me, so it's great. What do you view as your role on this team? I think it's just like if we come out with a bad start or just like keep the momentum going with the team, bring energy in, just be always be there, like be ready. So, yeah. What? How important is it or how much does it help, I, I would say, as far as the as far as the, the nerves and whatnot, that this team has been here, not only in soccer, but in basketball and other sports, or not only in basketball, but in soccer and other sports, I should say. Uh, how much does it help that you've been in big games, you've been in pressure situations, and you're comfortable in those moments? Yeah, it helps a lot. Like, the pressure doesn't get to us. We have great leaders that help us, too. So nerves are there, but we know how to handle them a lot better. A couple of great members of the Centennial girls soccer team getting interviewed there, too, who are as well standouts on the basketball court. Frost leads the way with 21 points for Centennial, four straight in double figures. She's a junior committed to NDSU, where she'll be taking her talents to the next level in still a couple of years, averaging 15 a game. And uh, the Cougars looking like a top seed. They get a couple of really nice wins back to back to move on to the section final. Uh, against a to-be-determined opponent. We'll find out in our next set of highlights. Was it the Blaine Bengals, our other North Metro TV school? We'll find out. Will Blaine, the semifinals clash with Anoka. Anoka, the three seed, and whoever wins this one, as Matt just alluded to, Centennial awaits. Here we go. Samantha McCongi gets things going early for the Tornadoes with the corner pocket triple. Blaine has the answer. Molly Garber fed inside and she connects with the floater. Garber, the heart of the Bengals there. She attacks the rim and scores with a kiss off the glass to the second half now. A very low scoring ball game. There's Olivia Lackanen with the points in the paint. She led the way for Anoka. Tie game at 18. Madison Bryant drives the baseline and puts up two. Both sides exchanging points at this point in the game. Lucy Romaker gets a big three-pointer for Blaine. And now the Bengals creating some separation on the scoreboard. Garber with a nifty move under the basket. She always finds a way, and Blaine goes on to win this one 38 to 30. It wasn't the prettiest game anyone's ever seen, but you guys weathered the storm. How was your team able to come out on top here this afternoon? Uh, definitely digging down on defense, getting those stops, because even if we weren't scoring, if we could prevent them from scoring or second chances, we could just get in the flow and then start knocking down. Seemed like that matchup zone. I mean, you forced 16 turnovers. You held them to an impressive 3 of 27 from 3. That matchup zone, it seemed like, was really the key defensively for you guys. Uh, yeah, definitely our zone. Um, we've been working hard on it, um, trying to take away the threes or making them uh, contested challenge threes. And so it worked tonight. Um, one of the big innovations is uh, in the first half, when you went on a personal 10-0 run, they had you up at the free throw line or at the elbow, and then you were catching, turning, and doing your thing, either attacking the basket or making passes. Um, how do you like being in that offensive position, and, and what did it allow you to do? Um, I was in that position my sophomore year, and I learned to love it. So just going back to where I was and facing the basket, I felt like I'd go either way and finish, and it was just comfort for me. But you weathered the storm and you came out on top. What does that say about the character and makeup of this team? We've had a long season, but we've been playing really good basketball and we're not done yet. Great stuff there. And yes, that defense leading the way for Blaine, but who also led the way, Molly Garber with 20 points and three steals of her own earlier in the tournament just eight points to advance to this point but she knows when to step up big um, a low scoring game the 38 to 30 final compared to centennial and andover's final score so it will be blaine 
and Centennial in the Section 7-4A Girls Basketball Tournament. It'll be a very exciting one to say the least. It all gets underway March 9th at 7 p.m. up in North Branch. The one and two seeds advance and what a treat this matchup will be for the area's viewers and the fans of Blaine and Centennial. And Matt, you've seen both of these teams perform throughout the season. This will be an interesting matchup. Yeah, packing my snacks, excited to take the trip up to North Branch High School this Thursday night. And we're, at, we're absolutely looking forward to it, right? I mean, we've talked about how great defensively Blaine have been as of late eight straight games they've held uh, an opponent to inside 50 points including a couple of 30 point defensive performances that we saw in the highlights uh, from them they held centennial to a season low 31 in the last matchup back on february the 19th these two teams split the season series so it's a wide open game can blaine keep this defensive run going and then centennial have been historically the class of the section. They hadn't lost a section game in two years since they joined seven until Blaine beat them just a couple of weeks back. So very interesting, two rivals going at it. And yeah, looking forward to a great game on Thursday. And you and uh, Bill on the call. So that'll also be a treat for the listeners. <laughs> well, we're just around the corner from the girls head into Williams Arena to the Target Center for the girls state basketball tournament. The boys right behind him. We've got section basketball to play on the boys side uh, as the regular season wrapped up last week. If you like scoring, this is the game for you. How about 19th ranked Blaine at number seven Andover, the Blitz and Bengals and the Hustlin' Huskies, two of the most up-tempo teams that you will see in the state. Zach Shu said with a bucket there a moment ago, how about Sam Masungu? Everything this guy does is smooth to the basket. He had 20 in this game for the Huskies. Devin Picos with a nice turnaround as he buries his defender. Uh, Andover would really get it going with their two big stars, Masungu and Ben Kapetsky. Another one from number one, Jordan Lyon, as the Bengals struggled to shoot from three, would get it inside. Nice dish off to Schusted, who was one of three Bengals with at least 15. Bowman would knock down a triple there. Alvin Payne with a nice defensive play, making the steal. Races to the rim for the deuce. He tied a season high with 18 points, the junior Alvin Payne in this game. There's the other big man you got to watch out for. Ben Kapetsky, him and Masungu combined for 52 as Andover drops triple digits in a matchup at two of the highest scoring teams in the state. It's the most points allowed in regulation by the Bengals this year. The two stars, Masungu and Kapetsky, combining for 52. Andover came into this matchup. They ended the season, in fact, third in the entire state, averaging 85 points a game. Blaine are 10th in Class 4A, so a very electric scoring performance as expected, but Andover wins this track meet in a big way. Uh, while Blaine were in action, that was their second to last game of the regular season. Centennial wrapped things up on the road at Robbinsdale Armstrong on Friday. Cougars being held to inside 30 points in each half. Struggled to shoot in this one. Sophomore Jack D'Agostino, the only Cougar to reach double figures. Jackson Driesen, quiet, only four points. We talked about la on last week's show his school record 44-point performance on the 21st against Coon Rapids. He has just nine points in the last two games since. The Cougars finish out the regular season 5-21, and 21, three wins coming in the Northwest Suburban Conference. SLP wrapped up their season at home against Rogers on Friday. Senior Ashton Tucker leads the way with a season high 17. Bo Johnson with 13 points ends the year averaging a double double. He's a senior headed to NDSU to play football for the Bison next year. Back to back wins for the Panthers following a three game slide and they finish out the regular season nine and 17 all their wins for SLP coming in conference action but it wasn't enough a nice turnaround in the second half of the season but the Panthers are the eighth seed in the section 5 4 8 tournament they match up with defending state champions Park Center in the section 5 4 a first round the Pirates had a 41 game winning streak snapped going back to last year but they did lose two of three down the stretch come into that matchup heavy favorites at 23 and two, a couple of wins against SLP earlier this year. In section seven, 
Uh, Blaine are going to match up with Anoka hosting at home. The semis in the final will be played at North Branch High School. The Bengals swept Anoka in a pair of meetings earlier this year. Centennial are looking to flip the result of a 79-62 loss at home to Duluth East. Back on February the 13th in Circle Pines, they travel north to Duluth to take on the two seed on the road. And the tournament is back at the Target Center. Uh, so I know we have a long ways until we get to that point, but excited uh, for everyone to get back on the court where the Wolves play. Yeah, it should be a fun tournament. And now uh, switching over to more playoff action, Matt, uh, the adapted floor hockey team Centennial Spring Lake Park uh, is in action in the section finals against South Washington County. And now right off the bat, it's a battle along the boards, uh, but it's won by SWC, a sneaky goal. Excuse me, it's won by the Cougars, a sneaky goal, and it finds the back of the net. Later, CSLP struggles to clear the zone, and SWC capitalizes with a goal from the near side. And now from half court, SWC leading 4-2, make it 5-2 with that rocket. Now backdoor goal for South Washington County, and that'll run up the score, and SWC wins the section final to advance to the state championships, and what a fun one that'll be. Um, uh, and a great season uh, by CSLP. Yeah, I mean, adapted floor hockey state tournament. I have not been to it myself, but it's an electric atmosphere. They've done it at Jefferson High School in Bloomington last few years. So mm -hmm. should be fun. Would love to see, of course, you know, our centennial team get there and, and get to be a part of that really fun tournament. Uh, last things to mention on the show, a couple of our North Metro TV athletes in swimming. Uh, two of the top 100 meter breaststrokers in the state out of this area, Max Shore of Centennial took home the state title with an All-American automatic qualifying time. Braden Ripken of Spring Lake Park finished fifth in that same event, the 100 meter breaststroke. It was a lot of fun over at Gene K. Freeman Aquatic Center at the U of M and across town at XL Energy Center. Centennial had three girls wrestlers, a medal uh, with third, a sixth and I believe eighth place medal. So a huge congratulations to the girls wrestlers. Enjoy the boys hockey state tournament this week. We'll be back to set you up for the girls tourney where we're going to have at least one of our North Metro TV schools in the mix. So from Mary Rominger, from myself, Matt Dean, this has been episode 24 of Sports Deck.